Hi everyone, it's Alison from the Group Hug here and this morning we're speaking to Hilary Rowland and Peter Heisen of Next Chapter Retreats who are members of the Hug Directory. So hello to you both. Hey Alison, morning everyone. Um, yeah, so I really want to talk to you this morning um, on a particular topic but just first of all, can you just tell me Peter a little bit about um, Next Chapter Retreats and how it all got started? Yes, given what we do and what we advocate, I'd love to say there was a moment where we sat down and we did our future life plan and uh, next chapter retreats was part of it. Sadly, we didn't. <laughs> it's been an evolving thing. Um, and if we look just in terms of retreats, for me, it goes back, well, I've been leading retreats for probably 30 years um, without, without ever thinking it would be a business. Uh, and then there was one moment where long before Next Chapter ever was birthed and saw the light of day, when Hillary and I said, do you know what? I can see sometime in the future, we're going to be leading retreats. That was it, said no more about it, but I suspect our brains processed that. And about three years ago, um, it, it resurfaced. So I basically just published a book and it had a particular purpose. So live the work you love mm. is a step-by-step -step process for people to find their way forward. And of course, with, with most books, certain type of personality loves them. They'll start at the beginning, they'll go all the way through and it's fabulous. Most of us get a certain way through and we think, oh, do you know what? <laughs> <laughs> Life has got in the way. And we designed next chapter retreats really to, to fill that gap. So for people who are looking to find a way forward, but they're struggling to do it on their own and they want some support. They want a Sherpa. Yeah, yeah, lovely. So in terms of the type of person that comes on your retreats, uh, what do you feel they are looking for? And what are the biggest challenges they're facing as they're sort of, I suppose a lot of them are embarking on a new chapter in their life so what are the sort of biggest challenges they're facing and I guess what are they looking to fix? <laughs> um, well if I think about some of the people who were on our last retreat we had a partner in an accountancy firm who wanted to change career completely we had uh, an MD of an agency who wanted to be a better leader we had an MD of another agency who was in her early 60s and wanted to think about the, the rest of her career and into retirement. Um, but I think the, the, the other one that I think is got a really interesting story, um, which is about actually what do you need to think about when you change your life, is um, someone who had a lifestyle that was absolutely killing her. Mm. Um, and she knew that. Um, but I think the big takeaway for us is that when, when you're in that situation, actually you've got to let something go. You can't build a new life on top of what isn't working. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we do is we get people to tell stories about their lives, both you know great stories about when everything was going well, um, but also more difficult experiences. And we get them, we, we do it in such a way that it's very gentle, very light touch, um, but they tell the stories to the rest of the group so that other people respond to them. And resulting from the way that people respond, they, we encourage them to rewrite the story. And if I give an example of one of the people who was on the retreat who's had this difficult lifestyle. So she was taken into the head teacher's office at 15 and told that she would uh, not do well in her exams and she should just get used to the fact that she wasn't um, academic. Um, being the person she was, she went home and started getting up at five o'clock in the morning um, to prove them all wrong. Oh, and got the exact results that she wanted. But decades later, she's still getting up at five o'clock in the morning and trying to prove herself. And that was what was killing her. So we said, OK, you know, tell, tell the story again. And when she thought about it, she said, actually, I think that person didn't mean to say what I heard them say. Mm. And she wrote another little piece, which was about 
how, uh, what she thought that person really intended to say. And that has absolutely changed her life. That one, I mean, you know, looks like a little thing, but actually she's, she's made some big changes to her life. But one of the things that we have also noticed because we support people through the change is that um, people need to take on different mindsets. They need to develop some new habits. Mm. So you've got to leave some stuff behind, but actually you've got to learn how to do some new things as well. Yeah, yeah. So do you think it's quite, it's quite a brave move, isn't it, to um, make those changes? You have to be at a point in your life where you are really ready to say, okay, I am going to rewrite what happened. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I think that's absolutely right. Mm. Um, and we do talk to people in advance because the retreats are not always the right thing for people at, at a particular time. Uh, nor indeed are people necessarily the right ones to benefit from this approach. But it's also one of the reasons why we split the five days of the retreat. And they, it's three days and then two days that come 10 weeks later. Because people need time to process this. Mm. And it's not an easy thing to do. You know, if it was an easy thing to do, we would all of us have our life mapped out mm. and it would be up on a chart on the wall and we would just tick it off like a daily to-do list. Yeah. But for most of us, life ain't like that. No. And, and I can certainly say that from my experience. <laughs> so processing those things, and there's obviously more to it than just the stories that we, that we deal with. The brain carries on doing that in the background. So what we're really asking people to do is step aside for two blocks of time and then go back into the busyness, but start putting some of those things into practice. And then those habits become more deeply ingrained and they're more likely to be successful. Yeah, yeah, get that completely, yeah, yeah. And it is, you know, people going, we talk a lot about um, divorce and bereavement on, on the Group Hug website, of course. And um, yeah, it is about people being brave and making changes. And I think as well with coronavirus, it's just happened, you were talking, Hilary, about people changing career. I mean, if they've been made redundant or their, their role is just not going where they want it to go now, it's really important they do step back and have some time um, and reassess what they want out of life. And I think a lot of busy people are scared to actually take time out. They're on this sort of treadmill, aren't they? They're going, 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 going. They're not going really anywhere. And it's they're scared to actually step back and, and take stock, I guess. I, th I think that's true. And, but I think that very often, you know, people will let things ride until they just can't bear it anymore, mm. you know, which is you know, what we know about people getting into divorces and things like that. Mm. Um, and this particular example that I spoke about, you know, she'd have said, I can't possibly have time to go on a retreat. Um, I'm, I'm just too busy. Mm. But because, you know, her lifestyle was having such a bad effect on her, um, you know, she knew she had to do something about it. I should probably say at that point that we use all the stories with the permission of the people who told them to us. We're not just taking these things because confidentiality is a really important part of it. But she has written up oh. the, um, the story as a um, have time for retreat. No, I don't. And it's on our website. But we do always maintain that confidentiality because one of the things that we are frightened of is what happens if I tell this story? Not just what happens to me, but you know, do you mean I have to tell that in front of you uh, and potentially four or five other people as well? So trust is a big part of it. Yeah, yeah. So as you all come together in the retreat, yeah, everybody's um, open to listening to each other. And I guess there's some really good firm friendships formed as well in some of them well not only friendships but also um, business actually mm. uh, people passing business um, to each other within the group so um, yeah pe uh, there is a, a lot of trust that builds up um, which, which is really important but what we've observed is that people working together in groups get much further quicker 
than working on their own with, with, a, with a coach. Because when you're in a group and somebody is brave enough to open up and say something about what's going on in their life, you know, you either think, oh gosh, you know, um, well done for doing that. Actually, I don't mind sharing what's happening in my life now. Um, oh, and I hadn't thought of that. Mm. And gosh, if they're doing that, you know, maybe I could do this. So, um, you know, although Peter, Peter is saying five days over three months and five days sounds a lot, if you put that against how much time you might spend one-to-one um, -one with a coach, it's much quicker because it's more intense. Yeah, lovely. Okay, well, thank you very much for sharing uh, what you do with Next Chapter Retreats. We will be posting all the information about how to get in touch with you if people would like some further information to get involved. Um, and I'm sure we will be speaking to you again on other topics. So thank you very much. Great. Thank you Absolute very much. Absolute pleasure. Alice. Absolute privilege. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.